Praise God for God's people. You could be seated. You know, it just, it's just our, it's our, hallelujah. First of all, let me just say we're glad all of you are here. Let's settle that. Let's settle that. Let's just make sure that everybody understands we're happy that you're here. So there's no confusion. Hallelujah. We're glad that you're here because we, we are persuaded that you've come to learn. We're glad that you're here because we're persuaded you've come to learn. We're persuaded, persuaded that you've come to be taught of the Lord. How to do the things that Jesus Christ's blood was shed at Calvary's cross so that you and I can enjoy. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We're persuaded that you're being willing to be taught of the Holy Ghost. A price that was paid in the blood of Jesus Christ for us to be able to, to interact with this treasure from heaven. Now, I pray in the name of Jesus that all the doubt and all the belief and all the religious conduct of your appearance and of your manner of, of life would just cease to exist. And you'd step over into a place at this moment in time where you really are in expectation to be caught away into heaven. Because I look at people's faces all the time and I go, I don't see the faith to be caught away. I don't see, you know what? It doesn't take someone with a special gift of discerning of the Spirit to see expectation on a person's face. You can see disappointment. There's not a soul in here, a baby, can see disappointment. Huh? Not a person needing the gift of a discerning of spirits. Hey, any, ch any child can recognize expectation upon the face. I want you to, if you're not, don't have enough expectation, you need to get closer to the front row. Hallelujah. If you dumbo sikaya la poranaya. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's people come in this place. They come one time. They get every one of their needs met and they don't come back. There's other people staying here for years and I don't know. I just, it's just a walk of faith. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Hallelujah. Kijubona. Barasate pay. But tonight... There is enough of Rabbi Sioto. There is enough of a there's enough of a realm of the Holy Ghost for you to be able to begin to begin to enjoy. You don't have to try. You don't have to put forth a lot of effort. All you've got to do, <laughs> Hallelujah, is have an open heart of, of hunger and thirst and expectation in God. All you've got to have is a new birth experience. Um, a born again experience will cause you to be able to. Uh, Respond to the things of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll result Kananga Lesha Bay Ritan and Aha. Malane and De Kushibara Devi. We'll call Bolo Sitara Nemanga de Porosavia. Hallelujah. Zede Nemang Jay Suto Ramon Geshe Epea Tushi, Pravataxe. Lata Yeshe Konambaya. Hallelujah. Bulls de Ranea. Bekilin the Monsadeca. Brosas de Petisi. Halabas de Cain. Monday in a man Jesus. Ha. Monday a licky prosign, the matey loans did my itty beck say. Ha. Haleman Jesuko tea Kaya. Hanakea. Has anybody heard what I said yet? Poda Sina Kite. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've been hurt. You need your Kodosiana and you'd understand what I'm saying. Lotsaina Yitea. Is it going off in your spirit? Hallelujah. Not gay and Anaya Tisamongi. Hallelujah. It's here. The interpretation of tongues is here. The manifestation of the spirit. Is given to every person. Hallelujah. You catch it with your heart. You don't catch it with your head. You got to be learned. You got to learn a whole new realm of receiving and interacting. It is not the way it works in, in, in school. It's not the way it works within the realms of men. It's a different place. It's a love realm. Hallelujah. It's, a, it's, a, it's not something that you have to earn. Everybody that's trying to earn these wonderful things in God, they're getting nowhere. They will never get anywhere. It's just that which is received. Hallelujah. Anybody trying to get into this realm in doubt? Not going to get there. It's no access to doubters. That's what it says at the door. Doubters have no access. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And a doubter can grab the door all they want and try to turn it and try to get every key and every locking, unlocking mechanism known to man. And still there will be no access. And then some little child will walk up with faith, just turn the door and walk on in. <laughs> Then, the, then Mr. or Mrs. Doubter that tried to come in behind them will run right into a force field, fall right back on their fanny. Huh? Because Doubter can't come in. 
Doubter can't come in. Only a certain kind of faith can come in here. Only a certain kind of faith can access this realm. It's the faith that believes that God is here, that he exists, that he is. Well, people want to believe that God is somewhere in the future. He's not the great I will be. Hallelujah. Uh, you wouldn't believe it. I was down to try to convince somebody from the Hebrew language the other day. They were convinced that, it's, uh, that God was saying that he was the great I will be. Hallelujah. <laughs> Poor soul. He's not the great I was. Hallelujah. He's the great I am. He is in the present. You must encounter God in the present. He is. If you want to interact with him, you must believe that he is, that he's here right now, that he's the present God. He, that God is in the present. He's not in the past. He's not in the future. He's in the present. He's always be in the present because he's unchanging and immutable. He's always who he is right now. God wants to change your thinking. You're stuck. You're stuck in a human man-made realm. You're stuck in what you think you understand about God through your ideas in the Bible. You're stuck. Father wants you to come in to a place of recognizing that he's real. <laughs> that he has eyes and he can see. That he has ears and he can hear. That he has hands and he can touch you. God wants you to get out of the struggling realm. Oh God, where are you? Realm. And start interacting with them. To begin to simply believe. And the Lord gives us great encouragement. He says, and he says, behold. He says, look and see. In other words, I am with you always. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. When you begin to be, that becomes a reality. Miracles are available to you. Peace to every storm is available to you. A remedy to every sickness and disease is available to you. Even if you got hit with some kind of, uh, of sickness or disease, you'd walk around looking like and acting like you'd have no problem at all. And guarantee it won't be long. You wouldn't have any problem. All you do is gain through the process greater authority over the whole thing. Whether it's finances or whether it's the realms of sin and iniquity or whether it's the realm of sickness and disease. Whether it's the realm of men's own darkness and blindness of heart and mind. Listen, there's so many people that can't see God because they sit in darkness. They can't experience God's presence. They can't know the things that God's doing and by the moving of His Spirit because they sit in darkness, spiritual blindness. Because they so are engulfed in their own desires and their own wishes and their own way. Papa's promised you that if you'll covet spiritual gifts, they're yours. So you can go ahead and get excited about it now. I don't care where you're operating. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can get excited about it now. It doesn't matter where you're operating. And it won't be long. I'm telling you, Father is in need of everybody who's going to move in faith. God's not in need of people who are going to move in doubt. He don't need you. <laughs> Somebody say, why can't I be used? Because you're living in a realm of doubt. God can't use you. Father must and will only use those people who move in faith. That's the only thing he's doing is faith. And you stay over here in faith land. You stay over here in this interaction of faith in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Faith that comes by his word. Not just sitting around, you know, trying to imagine what it looks like and diagramming something about him. That'd be like drawing pictures of Jesus and bowing down and worshiping. <laughs> it's true. It's rather hearing the word of God and believing that it's a reality, the vocal utterances of Almighty God, and that they're yours, and it's true, and it's not a loop from you, and it didn't belong to some other generation. It's not for some other age. It's not something for the past or something in the future. It's now. He's the present God. He's the now God. He's right here for you. He is. I am that I am. Not I was that I was, or I will be that I will be, but I am that I am. I'm right here for you right now in the present. And if you begin to move in this reality, everything will change. You won't wake up in the morning going, God, what am I going to do in my life? You're going to run, you're gonna run smack into God the Holy Ghost. You're going to run smack into the power of the living God. He, he'll be right there before you. He'll be right there with you. He'll be an in interaction. He won't be on hold till Wednesday night. Because there's really not any headway there. There's really not any headway. In fact, you'll go backwards there. You won't go forward. You'll go backwards. It's, just, it's the ditch of religion. The Lord tells us that we have to lay aside 
all hypocrisy, <laughs> all envy. Oh, envy is a subtle, ugly demon thing. It's a, it's a subtle, ugly power that self-justifies the person that listens to its lies. Oh, but you must lay aside all envy and all malice. Malice is another little subtle devil demon spirit cyclops from hell. <laughs> Let people buddy up to way too much talk to. Get counsel from. <laughs> what should I do next, Malice? Huh? Malice, what do you think should be my next attitude? How should I feel now after that that I just went through? <laughs> oh, but laying aside all hypocrisy. Laying aside all envy and malice and evil speaking. Ah, then, you get to then you get to desire. Then you get to have a, a passion. Then you get to have a manifestation act of working of the spirit of Jesus in the sight of you. The spirit of the son. That now the, the new man, the new creation. Oh, the Holy Ghost at work on, in, on the inside of your spirit. Desiring. Having God's own desire for the sincere milk of the word. You don't get to grow any faster than the Holy Ghost allows you to. Don't matter who you are. Doesn't matter. It's all up to Him. And there are certain things that He's waiting for you and I to respond to and his word is forever settled he's not going to have a special little you know uh, fitted a little uniform of you moving forward in the things of the spirit just for you special little tailor-made uh, operation of god's grace for your life he father has made a general call he's opened the door to everyone and there's rules to obey hallelujah there's things that you and I have to recognize. Hypocrisy isn't going to work. Hypocrisy, for me, hypocrisy is equal to religion. It's always talking about it, saying that you're going to do it, want, and maybe even wanting it, to do it, but there's never a living reality of it at work in your life. And, and all you need to do is you, you find yourself living in that realm. It just get tired of you. Instead of blaming it on God and getting all upset with God like it's his fault, just get burned out on the person that's really to blame. Just get fed up to hear with you. Just look at yourself in the mirror and go, I'm fed up to hear with you. I'm done with you. You? Yeah, you. I'm talking to you. Done. Out of here. Amen. One night I was saying to people, saying to people, I'm glad I'm not you. And everybody's getting worse, worse. There's been a number of different occasions people are getting worse. I'm glad I'm not you. And then and finally help everybody understand, well, I'm glad I'm not me either. I'm in Jesus. I'm glad I get to be in him. Hallelujah. Ha, hallelujah. I would rather have Jesus than houses or land. I'd rather have Jesus than riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords to me. Christ Jesus is better than all the wealth. If I had a choice, if somebody said, and it was a group of people come together, we'll give you the biggest bank account that has ever existed under the name of any human being. Or you can have Jesus. I said, I'll take Jesus. You can have all of the prestige and all of the honor. And everybody will listen to you, what you have to say about the Bible. Or you can have Jesus. I'll take Jesus. Whatever it is. And then, you know, sometimes we'll stack up all these things. And then we'll go, yes, I'll take Jesus. But how about if we just stack up you? I think that maybe you is actually bigger than the biggest bank account ever put in a single human being's name. I think that you could actually be bigger than all the honor and the fame. Because this is where men struggle. For if it were less, 
then truly it would be that much easier for God's people to just turn themselves over to the Holy Spirit and say, okay, Lord, I'm so fed up with me. I want to learn how to think and have like you think. I want, I want to learn how to walk in the mind of Christ. I want to learn how to function under the inspirations of those things that you yourself do. And it's not mystical. It's not aloof from our everyday experience. These are very practical things. You know, when you want to please him and you know that a frown on your face doesn't please him and you're spiritually matured enough to realize that it doesn't, you don't need a sticky, you don't need a phone call from the pastor saying, what are you frowning about now? <laughs> oh, if the pastor would just call me. Why? Oh, because if he loved me, well, God the Holy Ghost is ringing the phone off and you're not picking up. <laughs> Why don't you just pick up from him? Hallelujah. Uh, Rome, I tell you right now, you start fasting and praying, crying out to God for something from the pastor, I'll, I'll guarantee you get it over to me. I guarantee you get, get it, he'll get it to me. But there, in the meantime, what will happen is when you begin to cry out for the things of the Spirit like that, the Holy Ghost is going to be able to talk to you. It's easy to hear the Spirit of the Lord talk. There is going to have to be willing to cooperate with Him in the things that He, he is doing. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I, pray that, I pray that you'll come to un understand and enjoy the beauty and the splendor of what it means to just be in dialogue with God, what it means to, be t to talk to Him, to pray. <laughs> what it means to all of a sudden be overwhelmed with the divine infusion of grace to where that there, there just comes a roar out of you. It's a roar of heaven. A shout of faith comes out of you. A word of divine power and authority, and it shapes things and shakes things. God begins to give you the capacity to know that you can walk into a nation and demand its change. And you're no longer under the rule of the almighty dollar anymore. There's a faith realm that you grow in. You, you're developed in. And there are all kinds of challenges that come up against you to try to keep this faith realm from ever really coming to any form of maturity beyond just childlike faith. Father wants to give you bold radical faith that will risk everything he wants but that faith is only called that the faith is only that faith is only called for and it's only realized in a life that's doesn't want to live for itself anymore as long as you just want to have faith so that you can have more money in the bank account that has your name on it as long as you've got faith because you want to have some prestige in the, in the, in the, in the arena of men. Oh, I want, I want to be in that meeting. I want to be in that church. I want to preach here. I want to do this. You are not going to go very far. It's not going to go very far. But what happens when really we'll be able again to allow God to develop in us the faith that accesses heaven? Because that's, that's where faith is first all. That's what it's all about. It's faith about relationship. It ain't faith about moving mountains. It's faith about relationship. It's faith about accessing a realm of the Spirit and living in the realm of the Spirit where it's real. Somebody said, well, I sat in church for so long, and I'm ne it's never really become real to me. It's not become real to you because you're stuck. You're in darkness. You're blinded. You're blinded by things that you chose to have in your life. All you have to do is with a hungry heart begin to reach out to God and say, Father, no, I want to understand this realm. I want to understand a realm of praying that's not boring. I want to understand a realm of worship that takes me. I mean, I, listen, I watch people you don't know. You don't know. This morning, the power of God was so thick in the place. I'm watching people right, left, and center yawning. I'm thinking, my goodness gracious. You need yourself a little adrenaline boost. The anointing is always like an adrenaline. It is a, it'll wake you up, keep you up all night. You won't be able to sleep. Hallelujah. Kapata di brasatai. Huh? Just so consumed with one's own body. So consumed with one's own human condition. So consumed with one's own feeling and sense realm. Oh, that's got to be terrible. I pray in Jesus' name, you just get fed up with it. 
I pray you get sick and tired of it tonight. I pray that you just get your boots on, your boxing gloves, whatever. I mean, you know, as Paul said, I don't fight as though I beat against the air. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not shallow boxing against nothing. I'm telling you right now, I'm subdued. Anything gets in my way, even if it's me. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's more than likely going to be you, and that's why Jesus, hallelujah, that's why Jesus said, <laughs> you must deny yourself. Hey, the most common verse of Scripture that is understood and quoted by men and least understood by all. <laughs> hallelujah. Hard thing to do. Hard thing to do. Hard thing to do until you're taken over by the Holy Ghost and then you become so occupied with him <laughs> hallelujah so occupied with the things that he's doing so oh, delighted to be able to be under his influence and to be under his control that self just doesn't itself isn't allowed to occupy the things of self and when it rises up you go what on earth is that what you know, goodness gracious, it's like somebody singing bad out a key in the midst of a beautiful melody and harmony. It's like, whoa, shh, you're messing it up. It's like a squeaky wheel when everything's nice and peaceful and you're listening to waves roll in. A squeaky wheel. <laughs> Worse than that, though. You're like, Quiet, shut that thing down. Please. Wouldn't you like to live in this realm that I'm talking about? This wonderful life in Christ Jesus. This wonderful place where you're being continually filled with the Spirit. You know why you're continually filled with the Spirit? Because you're in the Holy Ghost. You're not in the Holy Ghost, you can't be continually filled with the Holy Ghost. It's not like we're going to get continually filled with the Holy Ghost because we're constantly getting out. <laughs> because you could, you're not going to get in if you're out. You're going to have to repent and do the first works all over again. Hallelujah. I would just so love it if tonight you would receive revelation from heaven. You would receive uh, operation of the gift of the Spirit in your life. That all day tomorrow you would just live filled with the glory of heaven. That all day tomorrow, no matter what it is that you're doing, no matter what kind of a job that you have, no matter what your responsibilities are, you just be happy all the day. You just be filled up with praise. You, ooh, you just feel his presence. It is such a grace. It is such a privilege from heaven to be able to be aware of and mindful of his manifest presence. Not something that you're like training yourself to be conscious of. God, I know you're there. I don't feel you, but I know you're there. I don't know where you're at, but I, I'm sure you're there because you said so in your word. So. You said, I believe it. Amen. Well, maybe that might be a place to start, but that ain't no place to live. As far as I'm concerned, it's no place to start either. Really. Huh? It's rather, let's just, oh, God wants you to run right into him like you was on that side of the room and you took off running blindfolded, okay? As fast as you can to this side of the room, except you didn't know a wall was there. Huh? And I don't know if you realize it or not, but when you're running that fast, you're bent forward a little. She had run head first into that thing right there, that wall. I want you to run into God like that. Then you won't have to wonder whether or not he's around and ever have to deal again with whether or not you came from a monkey or whether the scientists are right and the preachers are wrong. Who knows? God knows. We're just back and forth between two opinions. You're never going to move forward in God that way. It's just you're stuck. It's uh, so many people have been abused in life and they've never allowed Jesus to transform them and change them. And there's been so much hate and rejection that they're constantly in and out of the hate and the rejection that they've experienced up against the love of God that has been given. And they're picking on the daisy again. You know, he loves me, loves me not. He loves me, loves me not. And you're always ending up with the he loves me not as the last pedal to pull. Oh, that's terrible. So you get the scissors out and you split it in two. <laughs> you cheat a little bit to try to encourage yourself. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, God, the Holy Spirit, only he can teach us this. 
You can't convince yourself of these things. It won't work that way. I mean, you could, but it will be pretend. It'll be pretend. The reality of it is God confronts us with these things that are set in front of us. And he says, wait a minute. If it doesn't belong to the life that I've given you. Because it's once again, faith is all about it's all found to begin with in the context of relationship. It's the faith of Jesus Christ that brought us in to this salvation experience where we delivered out of the realms of our life that was condemned by sin and death and brought into a place of being born again and being a new creation so that now we may know him and there, now there's faith to interact with him. But what happens? If rather than that there being the activity of faith to interact with them, we begin to stuff our empty self with a bunch of religious stuff. Knowledge. Just stick some more knowledge in. You're feeling a little bit down and out, a little bit disappointed in yourself. Just cram some more knowledge in. Rather than letting the Spirit of the Lord take you to a place where you're just placing a demand upon God. People in past generations had a lot easier than your generation because they didn't have television. They didn't have radio. They didn't have all these entertainment. They, they didn't live the life of I'm going to just go skiing or surfing or skateboarding or whatever it is. Go to the movies or, you know, go goofy golfing or whatever. Just a full-on pleasure kind of prop your feet up and enjoy yourself kind of life. You had to get out and work for a living, for real. You had to go till the soil so you could get something to grow. <laughs> You had to take care of wild, you had to take care of, of, of cows that sometimes can act like wild animals. I mean, you had to work hard. There was stuff to do from sun up to sundown every single day. Where we we are a love of ease society. We're a care cares of this life culture. We're in prison in many ways by the pleasures of this world. And now people are stuck up against that and then they're having to deal with this. You mean, well, are you telling me I need to go over here and pray and get alone with God and choose Him over all of this wonderful entertainment stuff? I, I, there was a golf game I wanted to watch today because there's a golfer that I really liked that played and today, Jason Day. And right in the moment of time that he's getting ready to win in the playoff, I fell sound asleep. <laughs> I mean, it was right at the big moment that I'm like, <sighs> and I woke up going, oh, it's over. And so I started texting, who won? <laughs> because that's what it does to me. It just, it's a place where people just, you just turn everything off. And you go to sleep and you're just lazy and we can just be lazy with stuff. <laughs> just, just, can just be lazy. I'm tired. I'm tired. Well, what have you been doing all day? I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been being fervent in business. Praise God. Yeah, at the expense of the kingdom. <laughs> and then start getting all uppity now as you've been fervent in business. I don't be all uppity about the fact that, you know, I'm, 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 I'm working hard so that I can have some tide. And I started putting the wrong spin on the thing, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, 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 uh. Really, being with Father is such a pleasure once you find this realm. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Being with Him. It's not a, you know, I'm probably soaking wet. I am soaking wet. wasn't a labor somebody said oh you just you exhaust yourself you my goodness like rt kendall said to one night to me he said i didn't know anybody could move like that he said that's the most radical thing i've ever seen he said <laughs> he said you must be in really good shape reality of it is rt i said to him I said, I'm just captivated. It is no work at all. I don't even, I think a fat man that weighs 350 pounds and about to die of a heart attack could actually do this. <laughs> and it wouldn't have a ill effect upon him. 
because it's a joy. It's a pleasure. It's, a, it's captivated. It's a rapture. It's the spirit of the Son taking hold of me. It's the movings of the Holy Ghost. It's his body. It's his body anyway. What are you going to do with the body? When, I, there was a time in my life where between services, I'd go surfing. This was a long time ago. <laughs> And, and, and then, you know, it's Sunday night, and I've got to preach, and I'm like, oh, I'm tired. And I'm saying, Lord, why am I so exhausted? Because you've been surfing for the past three hours. <laughs> Duh. And I said, Lord, that day, I remember the day. Remember the day. I said, Lord, I'll never do anything ever again on your day, on Sunday. It'll all be about you. You're going to get all of my energy. And from that day forward, it's always been that way. You know, Father brings us to places in our life where we begin to recognize, wait a minute, I'm spending a lot of my life on me. I've got very little left for him. And, you know, that's a grace. And I didn't have anybody telling me. I didn't have someone. My dad wasn't standing over top of me telling me and micromanaged me and God. I had a heart to hear God. I want to, I want to know him. More than anything else, I want to step over in that realm and interact with them. I want to touch them. I mean, I, my whole life is, I, 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 I got here with the grace that I believe is available to everyone. Lord, this one thing I desire of you, that I may behold you in your sanctuary. I know where God's going to be, in his sanctuary, not in your living room. Not in my living room. Not in the park. Not among the redwoods. In a sanctuary. You know what Jesus said? You know, he defined for us Father's will. Don't you know I must be about my Father's business? He defined for us kingdom business. He took all the subjective away. Where did, where did Mary and Joseph find Jesus? In the tabernacle, in the church, in the sanctuary, doing Father's business. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wasn't up on Mount of Olives. He wasn't down there coaching somebody by the Jordan. <laughs> he wasn't in somebody's living room having house church. <laughs> now, that's just a product of a rebellious generation, a rebellious age. Oh, yeah. It always gets me into where into the position of uh, gaining more friends. <laughs> where people feel better about me. <laughs> cool toss that day. The bottom line of it is they all know it's true. They just got to think about it for 10 or 15 years. Unfortunately. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, one of the best things that you could do to, for you tomorrow, huh, is you could get up in the morning, hallelujah, and, uh, and, just, and just start praising the Lord. Huh? How long do you spend showering? Huh? You think about the total amount of time you spend showering and, 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 and buffeting your body, <laughs> caring for yourself, tidying up yourself, managing yourself, straightening out. Think about that. How do you get God in that? How do you get God into putting on your lipstick? How do you, women, of course. How do you get God into How do you get God in the big middle of the shower? How, oh, there's a better way to wake up than coffee. Huh? Hallelujah. I, I, I knew this one guy, and my goodness, it took, it took him someplace in God. He said, listen, you know, he said, I am just, he said, my biggest problem is that I'm lazy. Well, he knew it. He knew it was his biggest weakness. My biggest problem is that I'm lazy. I have a hard time focusing. So what I've just done is I get in the shower. I take a 45-minute shower, and the old time, the moment I get in there, I start crying out to God. And after five years of crying out to God in the shower, that's every day. Praise God. Every day, he's got a place where he meets with the Lord, you know. <laughs> I haven't talked to him for years, but I'm sure that it has advanced beyond that. Because it's going to happen when there begins to become a diligence in our life and a faithfulness in our life. And it's all really about knowing that he is. That he's present right here. I can touch him. He'll touch me. I can talk to him. He'll talk with me. I was thinking the other day... Uh, this, uh, you know, I, I have I received downloads from heaven every single day of my life. 
every single day of my life, I have a busting loose revelation from God. It goes on the Twitter, it goes on Facebook, or it just goes down on the paper because it's a burning fire. It comes out of my mouth, it's out of my spirit. It, 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 you can't contain it. His words like a fire shut up in your bones. When you get something from heaven, you're not gonna, be, you're not gonna sit on it. You ain't gonna sit on it, uh-uh. You'll explode. <laughs> and so I was thinking, my, what if I didn't have this every day? And I, I thought, oh, God, what if I got into a place that I didn't have your communion? Lord, it would be the most, it would be worse than dying. It would be worse than, it would be worse than no longer living. Father, then I just wanted to, you know, I just, it just, you know, turned in my spirit to just thanksgiving. Father, don't let me ever lose this with you. Lord, this is more sacred to me. This is more important to me than anything else. I don't want to lose this. I don't want to get, I don't want to get busy with this thing or, or busy with that thing. That I don't have time to just sit here in your presence. Because I've never had God speak to me running down the road that way. Not on that consistent basis. It's where I get along with him. I just sit there. Hallelujah. I know, that, I know that many of you have to get up very early in the morning to go to work. But you know what? You can get up just a little bit earlier or just sit down in your chair and just open up the Bible and just begin to read slowly. Just begin to read. Just begin to read. Just begin to read. I don't care what you read. You're going to discover, listen, all you need is more wisdom and closer relationship. And I'm telling you, genealogies will explode on the inside of you. <laughs> it will explode on the inside. What was boring before is like, Whoa. This is amazing. Do you know what these names mean? And then the names will start sticking out, you know, just standing out to you. And God will begin to speak to you. And then you'll look at the, 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 you know, the, the giftings of God that was passed from father to son. The blessings of God upon a generation. Oh, God, I want those blessings upon my generations too. I'm going to lay hold on something in God so my kids can have it. I'm going to lay hold on something in God so my generation can have it. Hallelujah. But I'm going to just tell you what it really is all about. I'm going to lay hold on something in God because i got to have it. Where did that come from? God put that desire in us. What if, what if you're frustrated if you've got a desire from heaven and you don't believe that God is? You may believe that he's up there somewhere, over there somewhere, somewhere back in the past, somewhere there in the future. But when you believe that he is, that he's right here, whoo, when you, be, when you bust past that barrier, when you pa bust past that, that veil, that blindness of heart and mind, and then you begin to have an interaction with him, you know he's there. Oh, man, that is a pecola by you. I don't know what I would do. I would, you know, I, 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 I feel the same way about it that I've watched many other people. I, I've, I've been around people that came close to almost walking away from the ministry who have great anointings in their life. And I would watch them sob and cry, I, I can't live without the anointing. They would say, I can't live without the anointing. Oh, God, don't let this anointing pass from me. Just sobbing. I, I, I'm concerned that the majority of people who come to know the Lord Jesus knew nothing about that. Because they, they live without it every day, and it hasn't touched them. It hasn't affected them that way. There is a place in God that is available to you, but you have to seize it. There is a place in God that is available to you, but you've got to believe it. You've got to, get so, you've got to get so fed up with yourself and so frustrated with your lack of encounter with God that you begin to place demands upon God and yourself. You say, I, can, I cannot live like I cannot live like this anymore. God, I cannot live like this anymore. I must know you. Something changes now. Father, all this stuff matters nothing to me. People thrusting one thing against the other, doing this thing and doing that, lobbying for position. Father, I just want you. There is an event that happens, as I said this morning, I think that Carlos Anacondia sized it up very well. He said, it's not how long you pray, it's the intensity by which you pray. It's the intensity with which you pray. A person can pray and accomplish more in 30 seconds than a person could accomplish. 
than 30 hours or maybe even more because it's at the depth of the cry of the Spirit. That, just, that doesn't just happen because you're sitting around and you're just like, que sera, sera with God. You're just like, okay, I'm available, God. You know, I've got a lot of fish to fry here as well. So you gotta, if you've got anything to say to me, you better get it done because I've got to move on. <laughs> you get nothing from the Lord. Because you have two opinions. The Lord says, don't think you're going to receive anything from me. See, there was a time in my life where I, I had this experience where I wasn't receiving anything from the Lord. I was trying to get into a realm that was made available to me, and it was I couldn't get in there. And so I was just reading the Scripture, and the Lord says, you double mind. any double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways, and he's not going to receive anything from the Lord. And I said, okay, Lord, obviously I must be double-minded. And so right now I just repent for being double-minded, and from now on I fix my sights on you. Uh, I'm not going to have, uh, I'm not, not going to have an eye for my things and an eye for your things because then my whole being is going to be filled with darkness because my eye is not single. So I'm fixing on you and I ask you now to help me have it fixed on you. Show me how to walk in this way because I have no understanding of it. God, you retain all rights to revelation so that we might know how to live a heavenly life in an earthly realm. All we know and understand is how to live an earthly life. We know nothing about living a heavenly life. We know nothing about living a life in the Spirit except for the, the things that this Lord has told us in His Word. And some of them almost appear vague. Some of those things almost seem so generalized that you don't even know where to begin in this application. Some of them. Some of the things that God commands us to stop doing before He starts doing doesn't seem to ever penetrate our understanding that they really are all that bad. When's the last time you noticed, for example, envy messing with you? Huh? When's the last time you noticed envy messing with you? Does anybody have to deal with envy to some degree every day? Two people, three people, four people, five, six, seven are conscious. The rest of you are unconscious because you deal with it every day. You're just unconscious. I'm sorry to say, I know you're in the presence of the Lord and sin does not appear. You don't even know if you've ever sinned in your life because you're so raptured in his presence. That's just the, the wonderful thing about being in his presence. There's no remembrance of sin. It's a glorious realm. But everybody deals with some degree of envy. You just don't understand how it comes in its subtle forms, in its threatening ways, its intimidating voices. Oh. But in Jesus' name, God open up your eyes so you no longer give your members to it. Because it's got to be laid aside before you can begin. It's got to be put away from out now laying aside. And then the Lord will not only talk about laying aside hypocrisy and, and envy and malice and evil speaking that you may desire the sincere, sincere milk of the word. Then he'll begin, he'll begin to further say, now putting, us, putting, putting away from you, putting off from you these former conversations, these former activities, these former thoughts, these former thinkings. And I want you to look at it with me real quickly in Colossians chapter 3. And, and you know, I, I think that, I think that somehow we believe in our minds somehow that we can continue to carry on with this bad behavior, this wrong behavior, this wrong processing, this wrong thinking. Let me just tell you, those of you who are being harassed in your mind with evil thoughts, that will cease just as soon as you begin to lay hold on a commitment. Will you have to go through a battle? You're going to have to go through a battle. There's a battle with everything. There is a battle and there is a persistence in God that ultimately gains a higher ground, that gains a breakthrough, that gives to you results in you growing and maturing you show me people who have, who have been dedicated faithfully to engaging in the things that are contrary to the purposes of God simply by engaging and doing the will of the father day in day out I'm going to show you folks that are matured and have gained higher ground in God that have authority in God that aren't dealing with the same things they were dealing five years ago or 10 years ago or 15 years ago 
And then the beautiful thing of it is, is we gain momentum and we find ourselves not having to go through some process of dealing with a season that lasts for a year or two years or a few months where you're just dealing with something. Now, all of a sudden, you've got an authority to say, out of the way, get out, go! Now, in Jesus' name. And I've never dealt with a devil like a little bunny rabbit or some little soft, nice little thing. We don't, don't, don't hurt it, feelings, or like a little sheep or a lamb, you know, jumps out of its skin. I always deal with it like a ravenous wolf that it is. Huh? Oh, seeking baras de devre. Like the predator, the devourer that it is. Like the snake that it is. Hallelujah. Crap All right, you don't get any snakes around me? I don't care if they are your pets, I'm going to kill it. I'll kill it. I'm a snake killer. Uh, scorpions, I'll smash it. I don't care if that's your little pet. I'll smash that thing. <laughs> and I got spiders. I don't care. Ah, uh, get the grade out. Uh, they're going. I'm set against the lizard and the spider. Huh? And I said, why? Because Jesus set against it. Huh? He likened the lizard and the spider to demon spirits. I don't play around with stuff that likened them to demon spirits. Give me a bro, I'll smash it. Chop it up in pieces and bury it. Burn it, then bury it. Chop it up in pieces, burn it, bury it. It's that bury its ashes. <laughs> then put a pile of stones on top of it. That's the way God dealt with sin. That's the way God deals with sin. I'm gonna be like my father. I'm gonna imitate my father. I'm be on his side. He's gonna know I'm on his side. He's gonna know I'm kicking in with everything he's do doing. I don't care, I'm kicking in. I don't care how big the guys look, I'm kicking in. I'm gonna stand right there. Hallelujah. Kabasada Vega Leopora. Ha ha. My name Rosaya. Come on now, people. Come on now. You have to decide whose side you're on. You gotta decide whose cause you are uh, that you, you you have been giving yourself over to. If it's, if it's your cause, I'm telling you, it's a losing cause. It's a losing interest. But man, when you begin to give yourself over to the cause of Christ. To the cause of the kingdom, to the cause of a lost and dying world. When you give yourself over to the cause of destroying the works of darkness, and suddenly it's on, the responsibility is on your shoulders. And you know if you open up a door to sin, you, for your own self, you open it up to others as well. You're not going to do it. You're not going to allow those hate demons in your life that are kill and steal and destroy every good thing, because that's all they're going to do. They'll mess everything up. Every good thing, they mess it up. Everything that pertains to life and godliness, they mess it up. I'm going to mess them up. I'm going to mess them up. The Lord has given to us his ministry. <laughs> Hallelujah. And his ministry is to go everywhere, destroying the works of the devil. What a great ministry. Whether it comes in the form of sickness or disease. I was, I was um, watching a television commercial the other day about it was raising money for little children with the diseases. And I got so busted. I fell on the ground. I began to beg God, oh God, let me have, oh God, this miracle anointing. Let me have this miracle power. To where every baby that has sickness or disease is healed. I mean, it wasn't just some little passing thought. I mean, that's how God hits you. That's, when you hang around in the presence of God, you're going to get hit. You're going to get smashed with some stuff from heaven. He's going to take a hold of your being and your emotions, and you ain't going to have any composure left. I just watched it in a television commercial. My wife and I, we started watching it on a movie, and there was in the movie somebody who had a disease, and we're all busted up crying because we, we want to see them get healed. We're thinking about all the people got that disease, and we want to see them get healed. Forget it. Turn the thing off. It's just a, we, you, we can't even think about that thing anymore. Now we're over here. God, where, where, are your, where are those wonderful outpourings of your spirit? To take people out of the realm of the doubt and the unbelief. To break out of the prisons of limitation that your church right now finds itself in. 
And I find myself coming up against certain walls all the time, certain limitations all the time, held back all the time. Then I look at people sitting around in the church, aloof, thinking about other things, interested in other things. And I'm going, my goodness, you're so far from the things of the Spirit. I mean, you haven't even begun. You haven't even opened up the door hardly to let God even begin to impress upon your heart what's meaningful for, to Him. Because He'll put in your heart what's meaningful to Him. He'll explode in your passions where it's your becomes your very own, those things that are important to Him. You won't be having to try to think it out and trying to pray it out and trying to figure it out and trying to hope for another day. It'll be you. It becomes yours. And it's different. There's no labor to go to prayer anymore. Huh? They're not trying to be broken. You're broken, man. Because <laughs> you're filled with the Spirit of the Lord. Because He has access. He has liberty. You know, the Holy Spirit I've heard all my life. He's a perfect gentleman. He doesn't impose anything on anyone. Huh? He's very, very, very polite. He's very gentle. doesn't impose anything on anyone. You say to him, hey, would you like something to eat? He's going to say, no, I'm good. No, are you sure? Are you sure you don't want something? No, please let me fix you. I'm, I'm fine. No, please. I really, I would like to fix you something. Well, if you really want to, if it's re if you really want to, sure, it'd be fine. I'll take some tea, some throat coat tea. Have you ever had throat coat tea? That is great. I love the licorice root. You know, you can drink that any time of day. You can't ever get too much of that. I don't think. You begin to nerve. <laughs> You begin to be go You begin to be so tired. You begin to be not stop. You begin to be so tired. You begin to be so You begin to be so tired. You begin to be so tired. You begin to be so tired. You begin to be so You begin to be so You begin to be so tired. You begin to be so tired. You begin to be so tired. You begin to become acquainted with his ways, with his nature. Huh? Suddenly, the story of Abraham where he looks and he recognizes, oh, that's God coming there. And you see him get all excited, start work, getting all worked up, get everything all squared away. He recognizes the visitors that he has. And he wants to say, come, sit here, comfort yourself. Don't go anywhere. Please stay with me. See here, here. Look, I got this all set out for you here underneath the shade. Sarah! Get stuff ready. Take please right here. She can take care of it. She does no problem. Come for you, you souls. Stay here with me. Stay here with me. You just see him like it's almost that he's there at the door of his tent. He's just waiting. He's waiting for heavenly visitation. His eyes scanning the horizon. Being sensitive in his soul to the presence and the movings of God. Just knowing deep inside, hey, there's something going to happen today. Derry, all of a sudden, he picks up three forms moving towards him. Who? Come on, man. When you begin to read, when you begin, when you begin to read the Word of God, and you begin to interact with God on the basis that you really want to know Him, you want to see Him, you want to touch Him. You know that he's there. It's not you're trying to convince yourself that he's there. I think he's there. I think he loves me. Somehow I, I'm persuaded of this philosophy. Man left to himself is this, isn't it? He just, he can't, he's, he's there, he's stuck. We're left to ourselves, we're stuck. I can't legislate these things to you. I can't mandate these things to you. I can show you the way in. And if you're really serious about coming in, he's got the same response to everyone. He doesn't have any preferences or show partiality to anyone. He's not limited access. He's not given various different ranks. He's given everybody the privilege of sonship. And there's no greater place or position with God than sonship. Not called politic. He's amongst you live frowny and saddy and sorrowfully, you're living in you, and I want you to get fed up with you. I want you to go look in the mirror and say, I'm fed up with you. Get lost. <laughs> I 
You're not dictating to me anymore how I feel, how I act, how I behave. I'm putting on the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm going to let the Holy Ghost rule over me. I'm going to be filled with the Spirit, and I'm going to walk in Him, live in Him, be led by Him. I'm going to want Him, only Him. I'm not having anything else but Him. To become faithful to the Lord. Or are you not interested in going and dating anyone else? I'm glad that my wife didn't come to me and say, Honey, I'd like to date someone. <laughs> I like to spend some time over there with those other folks doing that other stuff. But Father said his people do that to him. He said he, he's actually said his people did worse than that to him. They played the whore, not, just, not the prostitute. They didn't even charge. They just played the whore. Can you imagine that? I've asked the Lord, Father, has there been anything like that in me? Have I allowed anything like that in me? To where I played the whore with you? Where I've gone carousing? And being intimately involved with things that hate you, that are opposed to you, to be friend with the world, not just a lover of the world, just a friend to the world. I see friendship with the world marked all over many of God's people's face. It's got to come to an end because you're never really going to begin with God in this place. You're never going to know how to access this realm of divine glory that the preacher is telling you about, that the Word of God is declaring until something happens in your spirit. Something's got to happen deep within your soul. Say, no, 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 no. Father, I want to know you. No, I want to know you, Pops. I know you here. I know you here, Lord. I want to know you. I spend many hours pacing the floor. Say, God, please, 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 God, please, 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 please. I want to know you. Please, please. Something that comes and seizes our heart that doesn't belong to men. It's an opportunity that God would give to you. The where that on your own, wherever you're at in your life, you'll find yourself right in the big middle of things of the Spirit. Looking for Him. Looking for opportunities to be used by him. No matter where you're at. Hallelujah. You play golf with me, it's going to be a Holy Ghost meeting. You ain't going to go anywhere. I'm talking about things of heaven. Hallelujah. We're going to go to the World uh, Agricultural Expo. I'm going to walk around the place asking God for wisdom and insight. I'm believing. I'm me mean, I seeing nations reached as I look at the different stuff. I'm asking. I, I get, I'm gonna grab a hold and get to faith when I see something that I need for the kingdom. I need that right there. Okay, I need that now. Lust ain't gonna get me. Lust ain't gonna move me. I gotta have that for me. Come on now. There is a realm of which we need to begin to engage with the Holy Ghost and our passions. But it's not going to happen if we're not willing to, to set aside those other things that would come along and try to subdue our members and try to rule our members. And that's why the Lord says here by Paul, he says some hard things. <laughs> and before you can even begin to understand these hard things, you've got you've to understand the first things. We're risen with Jesus. You need to get happy about that. Until you, you're going to have to get past whatever it is that's got you dying and resur resurrecting every Sunday. I'm, I'm gonna, you know, now I'm going to go die again. Because something else is living that needs to die. Now I'm going to get, well, come on. You, there's going to have to get past it. You're going to have to know you're a new creation, that you're in Christ Jesus, that you're risen with Jesus. See verse 1. <laughs> How do you know you're risen with him? 
How do you know you're risen with him in this context? If you didn't be risen with him, there's a responsibility that you have. What's the responsibility? Seek those things which are above. How do I do that? Father, I've got a job. God, God, Father! What are you talking about? Get real. How to help some people? Sit at his plane, pretend. How do you expect me to do this? For all of a sudden, a supernatural grace begins to seize your heart. And you look on things and there is a heavenly meaning and value to them now instead of an earthly meaning and an earthly value. Everything changes. It has, it changes. Everything changes. Its value changes. Its meaning changes. Its purpose changes. Think about it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I don't have any problems really with this thing that hit my lung. Heart. Is my thing, is my deal on? I just try to turn it off so I don't have people on the other side. Don't go. <laughs> I'm fine, believe me. And nothing have hold on me. Huh? Sikotana mesito. Here we are. We, we, God's given us his wonderful grace. He's given us his wonderful opportunity. So we take the wonderful opportunity. Now we've got a responsibility to respond. He said, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to seek the things which are above. And then what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to let God help us see and get real. Because I'm going to tell you right now, that's going to be a major change. If that wasn't a change for you, you something happened. You went wrong somewhere. Seeking things that are above is more than just coming to the meeting. It's taking the meeting everywhere you go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Seeking things which are above. That's the will of the Father. That's that, that, that which is at the right hand of the Father. Those are the things that pour down from on high. And, of course, you know, Paul helps us understand this. And, and please believe me. This is something that I'm telling you you're going to have to cry out to God for. If it's not in your life, you have to cry out for God God to do it because only he can empower you to do it. And that's why Paul said in Ephesians chapter 1, he said, I pray always for you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the eyes of your understanding could be enlightened so that you could, and I'm going to jump down, so you know the exceeding greatness of his power that was given to us when he raised Jesus from the dead. See, we're risen with him. And what did he do? Set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities, powers, and might and dominion. So in my seeking him, I'm looking, I'm going after the power that is given to us. I'm going after the authority and the responsibility that I have as the minister of the Lord Jesus Christ and how I live my life as a heavenly example, as the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ before men and angels right now. Hello. Now all of a sudden there's, enough, there's another meeting in your life. Huh? This is better than recreation. This is better than all the other stuff. It makes recreation when you do have it good. Huh? I know people <clears throat> devoted their whole lives to their industry, <clears throat> to ranching. They're 70 years old. We've, we've never been on vacation. Why? Because cows got to be fed and milked. That's seven days a week. And there was nobody else to do it. Vacation? Well, we're going to have to sell everything, start over. Can you imagine really being sold out of the kingdom business that you don't go on vacation at kingdom business? Did everything about your life is these good things of heaven the Father's made available? But it's seeing the pearl of great price. It's seeing the treasure that's in the hid, hid in the field. Otherwise, you're having to sacrifice all these things, and then you're just saying, Lord, look at all the sacrifices that I've made, and now I deserve, and oh, look at what I've done. And, and it's religious. Because the wrong, wrong heart did it. It wasn't a heart stirred with the passions of God. It wasn't a heart that was stirred with relationship with the Lord. You're just cleaving the relationship. And in cleaving the relationship, you didn't allow these other things or didn't have these other things. You did what you did out of relationship. You didn't do what you do out of responsibility, out of religious duty. It's a relationship. These things, you're available. I've got to ask for them. Say, Lord, I want this. And we can talk to them. Lord, I want this kind of relationship. I want it. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> I want to touch you. I want to feel. I want to feel your touch. I want to feel your manifest presence. A realm of faith. I've discovered a realm of faith over and again is a realm of willing to do. You know, yeah, we read in the scripture how that because of faith, because of who Abraham was in the realms of faith, his relationship with the Lord, righteousness was imputed to him, right? Accounted to him. But look what he did. Was it faith without works? No. We came into the meeting last night. And, you know, just, you know, after a while, you just get exhausted. You know, after, after a certain number of years of a pace, you just get exhausted. And exhaustion sticks with you for a while. And so, came into the meeting, and I was just, just exhausted. And just, I was telling the Lord, and, you know, I just want to help get people, things squared away and music. And I was just exhausted. I said, Lord, I'm exhausted. And so, I could say, Lord, I'm exhausted. I'm going to go home and go to bed. I could do that. Nothing wrong with that, right? So, I, I just, you know, I know what to do, though. See, I'm mature. I know what to do. I've matured in certain things. There's other things I haven't matured in, but there's certain things I've matured in. So I walked over, I took Rithiana's guitar from her. I knew what to do. I'm going to worship him. I wasn't so much about trying to help everybody else see how to. I, I like to be an example. I like to be a model of here's how it works. It ain't, a, it ain't about anything other than your heart. I began to worship him. Download from heaven. A download from heaven hit me. I guarantee you the atmosphere of the place changed. I wouldn't have been able to tell you. I wouldn't look into anybody. But I know I've been here before. Atmosphere changes. My whole, every, because things change. And when change things activate in me, when the power of God that is real to me activates in me, the atmosphere changes. And it's supposed to be that way for you. But there's a doing there's an unwillingness to, be, to remain where you're at. There's unwillingness to look for some human remedy, some human source. All I got to do is worship him. All I got to do is step in this place. And I begin to sing about Father's love. Hallelujah. How wonderful. <laughs> How beautiful. <laughs> His Father's love. <laughs> you are my God. And I am your people. That's, those were the words. Hallelujah. I've vibrated with the power and glory of that all night long. Hallelujah. I got caught up on at least a year's sleep. Right there. Just with that one event. There was a laying aside of something. There was a laying aside of my own weary body. My own weary, my own weary condition. Listen. I'm going to help you. I'm, I'm going to work with you as God gives me grace and, and God gives me ability. But I'm not going, I'm not, I'm sorry. You may have the most beautiful voice on the face of the earth and pray most excellently. I promise you I will not be impressed by that. I'm only looking for the anointing. And if I don't see the anointing, I'm going to try to, as much as I can, I'm going to try to reach in there and grab you and try to just talk to you about things that, that will ultimately help you activate the anointing in your life. But I'm really, nothing's more. Now, once you've seen the anointing, once you've seen the beauty of his presence, that's all that's beautiful anymore. Everything else has lost its splendor. There's nothing. When man, when you know that men are supposed to be filled with the glory and the beauty of his presence, the beauty of his anointing. Ooh, rabasaya. Matayilemekesipoya. Hallelujah. And it's available for everyone, and we want to see everyone step into it. They know Saul's around here. <laughs> we want to see everybody get more anointed. And we are. We want to see everybody get filled up with all these things from heaven. But there's things that you've got to be willing to do. There's things you've got to be willing to lay aside. There's things that you've got to not allow. There's manner of lifestyle that you've got to learn that you're going to have to come and not be intimidated, but imitate. You had to learn how to walk step by step. How are you doing that, Pastor? Well, this is how we move. 
This is how we do it. And you come and say, oh, how'd that work now? <laughs> Should have gone, oh, that's silly. I was sitting with Anna one day, and I did something. I can't remember exactly what it was. She said, that's silly, Papa. It's wonderful when a three-year-old telling you silly. And I act like I didn't notice and, or hear her, and she goes, that's silly, Papa. And then she goes, that's stupid. <laughs> and at that moment in time, I just cracked up laughing. I couldn't hold it back anymore. I was like, I feel brilliant. My three-year-old is telling me that I'm both silly and stupid. <laughs> we have to watch ourselves, man, because we'll look at the beautiful simplicity of God, the Holy Ghost, and we might count it silly and stupid. And Joshua had been telling her that because there was some behavior stuff going on in her life that she needed to recognize that silly. She was behaving wrong, and she's like, that's silly, Anna. Now she's going to put that thing on me. <laughs> she knows not to do that. Daddy, her daddy got a hold of her really good. Of course, I get a hold of her, too. I'm just, so much the way you, I'm not concerned about whether she likes me or not. She's going to do, she's going to make in heaven. Huh? I'm not concerned about whether she loves me. She's going to fear me. And she's going to do what I tell her to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because she'll love, she'll love me too. Huh? She can get anything she wants out of me. Somebody said, oh, she's got you wrapped around her little finger. And I just think to myself, you have no idea. You have no idea. Obedience and learning obedience is extremely important to me. Extremely important. It's nothing, has not, it's not for me. It's for you. It's for her. These things that Father's asking us to do is not for him. It's for us. Because we're never going to receive or have the things in our life that he so desperately wants us to have that pertain unto life and godliness and all of his blessings unless we cooperate with a very narrow and strict way. There's no room for compromises. There's no room for you to throw in your little ideas. That's silly. No room for your opinion or my opinions or some unique expression. Come on, man. This is a glorious realm. He's given us this opportunity. He says for us, set our affections on things above. He tells us we're dead. In our lives with, are hid with Christ and God. He tells us when Christ who is our life shall appear, we shall appear with him in glory. Wow. He sets it before us. That's awesome. Now he says mortify. It's within this new life. See, it's within the context of all that he's freely given. That he's saying, you're going to have to put it aside. You're going to have to lay it aside. You're not going to have to allow it. Or you're not going to have to not uh, allow these things in your life. It's got to be set in in concrete. <laughs> it's got to be set in a place where it is unmovable against your life. It doesn't move on you. You won't allow it, in other words, to move on you. It starts moving on you and it turns into a pillar of salt. It mortifies. It freezes. Doesn't turn into ice man, it could thaw. It just turns into rock man. It mortifies. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. There's something that, that must be done. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscences, covetousness, which is idolatry. Is there any of those things you don't have to deal with? Is there any of those things you don't have to deal with? You have to deal with every one of those things to some degree. And how are you going to deal with it? You're going to deal with it first and foremost because there's an opportunity that's been given. 
because there is a there is a power there's a strength there's a divine ability there's a choice that you're making heaven's more your heaven's your home heaven's what you want uh, the realms of the holy ghost is far better to you than the realms of anything else the pleasures that is the right hand is more important than any pleasures in this life he says because these things have for these for the, because of these things the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. So now you just went to another level, didn't you? The, it, it, it's not, the Lord isn't saying this stuff is in you. He's not saying that it's in you. It's in the world. It's in the world. These are the things that would come at your members. They would come and impose themselves upon your life. Try to work through your life because, you know, Paul broke this down even more clearly in Romans chapter 6. He said, don't yield your members unto sin. Your members as instruments or weapons of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield your members unto God, unto the Holy Ghost, unto the Spirit of Truth, unto, unto, unto the things of the kingdom of God as, as weapons of righteousness. <laughs> it, 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 but nonetheless, it's still very clearly choices that you've got to make, and it's choices about where you're going to go with your life, what's going to you're going to allow what's going to be a part of those things that bring you joy and pleasure, what, where, what, what captivates your interest, what, who you're going to dwell with and interact with. And, and the dimension of the spiritual affinity and the spiritual results and the spiritual activity should go without saying. Sin, you're interacting with demon spirits. Righteousness, you're interacting with the Holy Ghost because the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. And you're going to have to understand there's things you're going to have to be willing to put away, not allow, set aside. Otherwise, there's not going to be a partaking, a growing, a maturing, a developing in God. You're going to be on hold. You're going to be back and forth constantly deciding where you're right or whether you're going to walk with God or not, whether you're going to live your own life or live his life. Double-minded men unstable in all of your ways you won't receive anything until you settle in your heart who you're going to be you got to settle it he says verse 7 clearly in these things you walked at one time that's past tense you once walked in these things. You once lived in these things. What are you walking in now? What are you supposed to be living in now? You're supposed to be living in the realms of the Holy Ghost. You're supposed to be living in a communion and relationship with the Lord. I know that religion will keep people from this. I know that Buddhists are dedicated not to having fornication and not having, you know, a lot of these things in their life. I can go on with the list of religion. We're, not, we're talking about something that's far greater than that. We're talking about living and walking in a heavenly realm under the divine glory, a divine power that results in the things that were in Christ Jesus' life being revealed in ours. Hallelujah. A fellowship with God. Hallelujah. Mamro Sadevi. In Jesus' mighty name. But the Lord says, but now, period. But now also do this. Put off. Don't allow it. Put it aside. Don't, when it comes at you, not learn how to recognize it. You're going to have to learn how to recognize it. We're at walk, walk, we'll go out walking in the woods, and I'll say, oh, look at those deer. People are where? Yeah. There, see, there goes a coyote. Where? It's long gone. Um, there's some antelope. Where? How are you seeing these things? I got eyes for it. I've been in the woods a long time. I was with some guys out on a safari. The, the, the safari guide who lives out there in the Limbobo Valley. I said, wow, that is an amazing herd of impella. And he's going, where? I'm like, right there. He's, where? Oh. He's looking at me, staring at me like, can you see an angel? How do you see that? I got eyes for it. Can't develop eyes for it, just camouflage. You can't see it. Huh? It's true. Get out in the woods. You start living in the woods, you start seeing things different. Start living in the wild, you see things different. You notice, you notice those things. <laughs> it's 
Start living in, in the realms of heaven. Start just seeing angels. Start just seeing the things of the Spirit. Everybody's going, where? Where? What are you talking about? Word of knowledge. Discerning spirits. Working miracles. Visions. I never had nothing. But you, you don't, you, you're not familiar with the realm. You're not, you're not familiar with the ground. Father wants to make you familiar. Father wants to go, what I about that today? You don't have to... No, not go out and walk in the woods with me, feeling bad about yourself. I can't see nothing. I there must be something wrong. No, you're just from the city. All them lights got you blinded. You have to take a while. You adjust your sight out here. My wife, she's a perfect example of how you can be transformed. She was raised in a city, and she spot them now. She's on it. She can, she can see all the various different little creatures running around that before you would never see them. Just looks like there's nothing moving. Ah, oh, things aren't moving all over the place. It's alive with bountiful movement. They just move different. Father wants to become so familiar with the things of heaven. It's so beautiful. He's not going to withhold from you. It's not going to withhold from you. You're not going. It's not going to be a restricted realm to you. It's something that the doors are wide open. The opportunity. Father's saying, "Come on in," but He says, "Put away from you anger." I'm not allowing it. I'm not going. To. Somebody said He doesn't defend Himself. I'm not going to defend myself. If I defend myself, God won't speak through me with a word of authority. Somebody said, oh, if he don't defend himself, I'm going to get up and defend him. Well, bless your heart. I'm glad you feel that with me. I'm going to go with him over there because I know he ain't going to defend himself, but I'm going to get up and get in those people's faces that have sullied his uh, whatever. Man, please, don't mess it up. Really, I don't need it. I have a defender. I can sit and be quiet. Well, I'm not going to be in a strike. I'm not going to enter in a strike. People, you, I literally, you will see me get quiet and you will see me shut down just as soon as I see the slightest bit of strife. I'll just shut down. No, I won't have a dialogue. I'll just shut down. I'm not going to go there. Because if I do, I won't get to enjoy this fellowship. I've got to repent. I've got to deal with that thing in my spirit. I don't have time to do all that mess. That's like relaying the foundation. I'm busy, man. It ain't worth my time and my effort. I'm over here about wanting to understand how to walk in a greater res respect and reverence to his divine authority. We, we, my wife and I aren't going to have arguments. It ain't, it ain't going to happen. It is a very rare thing. And, if it, and, it, and it usually has nothing to do with her or with me. It's something else. And we know how to shut that thing down real quick, repent, say, Father, forgive us. How did that ever even happen? Aren't we, aren't we grown up enough yet? It should never happen. And we can praise God and rejoice in that it's rarely, but it should not even be that. Because there's something you've got to lay aside. There's something you've got to not allow. You can pray and fast all you want. You keep allowing this stuff. You're going to be exactly where you've been. All prayer and fasting should be is get you to another place of understanding where you say no. You're not going to come around me and hear me talking, running people down. You're not going to hear it. You're not going to come around here and remember my life and hear me justifying supernatural things in a natural realm. You're not going to hear it. You're not going to come around me and hear me spout my own mind and opinion. And when I do, and there's times that I do, my, do I ever come under Holy Ghost conviction and my, do I do some serious repenting. I'll go and I'll just tell myself, I'm fed up with you. I told you you weren't allowed to talk around here. You're embarrassing me everywhere I go. I'm done with you. Done. Jesus, help me. Holy Ghost, take full control. Forgive me for me. Amen. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. And, it's just, and it really has to be 
become a reality to you of you understanding how to deny yourself daily. How to be conformed in every way to Christ Jesus. How to be an imitator of God. How to recognize things that are opposed to him. Whose author is the world. Which comes from the spirit of disobedience. And not allow it. Because it's ultimately communion with the spiritual realm. That's going to hold you back from every good thing. And when you wake up to it. Suddenly oh, a whole new life unfolds before you. And ooh, let the good times roll. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ha, 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 hallelujah. Amen. Put away from you anger and wrath. Malice, there's that wonderful word again. Uh, I, I pray that you'll begin to deal with the two most subtle things, one, two of the most subtle things that integrate your feelings. And if you have not yet identified them, they are controlling your life to some degree. Envy and malice. Watch out. Watch out. It causes you more offense. It's what causes you to feel bad and angry and upset and disliked and uncomfortable more than anything else. And I'm not going to go into the details of that tonight. But understand, these are very important things for you to deal with in your life. And God, the Holy Ghost, and His loving kindness shines the light of them light on them and let you see the crawling, slithering things that they are. This wonderful thing, then you smash it. I woke up one night in Papua New Guinea and I had one of those poisonous centipedes about this long crawling across my back. It was a very hot night. I, could, I felt it crawling up my back as I knew I had something on me I reached real quick and I grabbed it and I slung it to the air. And it literally, I mean, the power of God hit it when my hand hit it. It exploded. It exploded in the air. It never hit the window or the wall. It exploded in the air because there its remains in it, literally hundreds of pieces. The next day, John was with me. I said, look at the centipede, man. It exploded in the air. I, I tell you right now, I dealt with that thing with extreme prejudice. I was like, oh, it's just a little centipede. Let's see if we get a jar out and catch him. <laughs> that's, that's how we need to deal with these things. That's how we need to deal with this, this realm, this communion, this, this activity of our emotions, our attitudes that are, are, that are an offense to God that are a grief to the Holy Ghost, that is training your spiritual realm and nature to be opposite of God, not to cooperate with Him, not to be one with Him. We're singing tonight. We're just rejoicing tonight as we're singing, or maybe it was this morning, and rejoicing over our oneness with Him, praising Him as one, those one who is one with Him. Oh, hallelujah. There's an activity of your life here. You're gonna ha it's not going to happen by some religious duty. You're going to have to get over in the Holy Ghost. You have to get over in the realms of spirit. You're going to have to get over in the realms of heaven, in other words. If you walk in the spirit, you're walking in heaven. Heaven's good. <laughs> heaven is heavenly. Ah. 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 Somebody said, are you sure you can have days of heaven on the earth? Absolutely certain. Look at me. I'm having days of heaven. I'm having days of heaven. Ooh, God, I'll see you la pahala say I want to be around a bunch of people who know their God. I want to be about around a bunch of people who know their God. And in knowing your God, you're going to have days of heaven upon the earth. You want to be used by God in a greater way, but you're going to be exceedingly thankful for everything he's done. That's the tension. Is If there's a tension, that's it. And it's not really a tension because the thanksgiving just causes you to be catapulted over to the realm of doing more anyways. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blasphemy. Filthy communication. Out of your mouth. We live in a culture that teaches filthy communication.
And there's, may, there's, there's mer- various different ways to separate that out for people. Tonight, I'm believing God that you'll be willing to step over and around of the Holy Ghost that so separates that out, that so distinctively highlights that, that you can see it a way off. Those impeller were about four or five miles away, standing on the wood line, and I was up on top of a, of a mountain. I could see way off. There would be just little teeny tiny things, but I knew what they were. You get to see something, you can see it. You can see it away off. I know what that is right there. That's malice. Give me a gun. <laughs> I know what that is. That's filthy communication. I'm taking it out from right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Guy brought over one of them big, gigantic sniper rifle, 50 cal snipers. First of all, the bullets are about that long. <laughs> Second of all, you got to get yourself set. But it's going to reach way out there. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm not letting that thing even nowhere near me. Come on, people. Come on. God will give you wisdom from above. You won't constantly be caught up, entangled with everything that Satan is doing to jerk you around, steal from you. He's going to be living right in the big middle of the camp of the thief. It's time you get liberated. It's time you get the upper hand. It's time you come into the place of authority, being seated with Christ Jesus above all principalities and powers and might, because you seek the things that are from above. You want the authority that comes from above. You want that place in him that he's made available for you, and it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you to learn how to do what's right, no matter what the cost. Lie not one to another. Watch out. Watch out. Fear of men. Intimidation. Watch out. Most lies come right out of a realm of fear and intimidation. Absorbed with one's own self will cause you to have no self-confidence at all. Isn't that strange? Huh. I mean, when you begin to be filled with the Spirit, hallelujah, you get a Holy Ghost confidence. You get filled with yourself, you got no confidence at all. And it's true. Lie not one to another. Oh, mambre de zidoya. To learn how to speak the truth. To understand that your tongue's either going to be set on fire of God and it's going to bless your whole body or your tongue is going to be set on fire of hell and it's going to curse your whole body. Curse your whole being. There is a place to learn how to just move with him, to, to fellowship with him, to love on him, to be loved by him, to learn how to speak. Uh, let him train you how to talk. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't, 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 it, isn't it just so glorious? He says this, put off the old man with his deeds. And, and their people have misunderstood this because they think they're always trying to get rid of the old man. No, no, no. The same, the same one who wrote that verse of Scripture right there wrote this verse of Scripture right here in Romans chapter 6 and you need to look at it. Same apostle. He wasn't. He wasn't double talking, okay? He wasn't losing track of what he already was established in. He says right over here in Romans chapter 6, he says this in verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with them, that the body of sin might be destroyed. All Paul is saying is don't you allow that thing any place in your life. It's dead It's cut off from you. You're a new creation. You're arisen with Christ. You have no place in this world. The world's going to come forcefully at you. You understand how to stand your ground and say no to everything that belongs to a demonic realm because you're of heaven, not of hell, of God, not of the devil. 
And here he says, this, this, is a, this, is a, this is putting away from yourself, not allowing it. Not allowing these things in your life. Not allowing them to come to subdue you. And then watch the activity. Now there is an undoing. There's always going to be an undoing. Put on the new man. It's an undoing. I said no. Every step of the way that I say no, you're not having place in my life. I'm here in fellowship with the Lord. I get an endowment. Hallelujah. Every time I have to stand in a battle where there are things coming at me like Jesus having to deal with Satan in the wilderness, angels come to minister to me and strengthen me. Every place that we find ourselves engaged for the souls of men breaking through into other realms in heaven. I mean, I've never sweat great drops of blood like the Lord Jesus. I'm willing. I'm, I'm willing to engage in that level of suffering. I'm willing to take up that cause in Christ, but I never have yet. But any areas that I have that's been similar to it, always the Lord comes, strengthens us. We feel it. We experience it. I used to have a problem with persecution, and then I got overwhelmed by the blessing I get out of it. I'm like, bring it, baby. You bless me. You don't know how you're blessing me because I'm telling you, just go ahead let it rip, man. I feel sorry for you. <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, you're not hurting me because I got one above that says, look, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. I'm, I'm going to put a great reward on you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, bless and curse not so that you may inherit a blessing. I'm telling you, when you persecuted for righteousness sake, the grace of God abides on you. I love being persecuted for who I am in God. Somebody said, how you doing tonight? I said, I'm doing great. I got my leather jacket on. The prophet's in the house. You know, I'm just kidding. But the prophet is in the house. Spirit of prophecy. Somebody said, you saying the prophet? I got the prophet living on inside of me. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, there's a number of offices right here in the church. God placed them in the church. The office of interpretation of tongues in the church. God placed in the church apostles, prophets. There's offices here in the church. There's offices that are here. They exist in the church. You can tap into them anytime you want them. Hallelujah. Praise God. We want you to tap into more of these things because the more you will make your, the more you'll make yourself available and tap into the realm, the stronger the manifestation of that realm, of that gifting that's present here, becomes to everyone. Hallelujah. Just here. You can bring your friends and watch them get healed, right? From the completely healed neck to what? Neck, back, legs, hips. Praise God. Amen. It's wonderful to bring your friends. Hey, I can come on over and you can get, go into the no pain zone, get completely healed. Amen. That's just beautiful, isn't it? Let me just take you over to a place where you get healed. Amen. Amen. And see, that's what you did with your faith in Christ Jesus. You said, I know where Jesus is. Come with me and you'll get healed. If you would have said, come with me, you might get healed. Who knows? Pastor's on sometimes, off the other time. Sometimes he just really rakes us over the coals. <laughs> and who knows what it's going to be tonight, but you can run the risk, you know. <laughs> and nothing ever going to happen there, man. You got a bad attitude, uh, uh, and nothing's going to happen. Nothing, that's anger. It's malice. It's malice in your heart. Malice is a terrible thing. It's the king of offense. It'll keep you from all the, enjoying all the good things of heaven. Put on, look at here. Love this. God's going to come strengthen you. He's a rewarder of those who seek him. He's, he's here. He's here. I know, the, I know circumstance and situation, death, sin, hell, devils, pressing on your soul. But just say, out of here. Just resist them steadfast in faith because Papa's here too. Papa's standing alongside of you. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost's here. Hallelujah. Jesus, Holy Ghost, making intercession. Father's dwelling here. He's got a seat here. Father's got a seat here. Father, I'm coming around sin. Father's not even to come dwell upon the earth till everything's all sin and destroyed. Last enemy of death is destroyed. Not coming around sin, but he's living here. He's here. 
I don't have to convince myself I've had an encounter. Father wants you to have an encounter. You'll have an encounter here. You know why? There's faith for an encounter here. There's more than one person who in this place has faith for an encounter. Faith for an encounter has produced within our life an encounter. We're not a one day in the future going to have an encounter. We have the encounter. We live in the encounter. In the encounter, we go from glory to glory. What a wonderful place. That's why we live in confidence and boldness and expectation. That's why on my way to church, I can be excited with the Lord as rejoicing in Him, thanking Him for the things that He's going to do. I, I, I never, here's how I deal with music. I say, Father, only you can bring the high praises. Only you can bring the sound of heaven. Only you can bring the Holy Ghost shout through me. Oh, God, do it. I want it more than anything else. Do it in me. Do it through these things through me. Amen. You do this. You consecrate yourself. Because this is this is really verse 5 through 9 is basically living a consecrated life. Saying, I'm not allowing that stuff. I'm out of here. And I'm not allowing it. And, and, that, and, and what God does in this wonderful place is he comes and strengthens us. He induces us. Because to say, when we say put on, literally we're saying a Greek word, induo, to be endued. To be endued and be endued. In other words, Father is empowering us with this resisting, with this saying no to these lies and all these other influences. Now here's an endowment for you. And be endued with the new man. Be endued with the new man. Be endued with the new creation. Be endued with the new. Literally, in the Greek language, it's just new. Just be endued with the new. Forget about the old. Be endued. Be strengthened. Be overwhelmed. Be empowered. Be, be, be knocked to the ground with the new. Because you're living in the new. It's the new creation. It's the new realms of relationship. Be endued with the new. <laughs> be filled up with the new. <laughs> be strengthened by the new. <laughs> be, be, be given the insight. Be given the heavenly divine ability. Given the, be given the blessings with the new, which is renewed in knowledge. After the image of him that created him. I've got an understanding. I've got a knowledge. I, the knowledge gives me an insight of what's going on. And God gives me with that knowledge an understanding on how to move with him. This is walking in the spirit. A knowledge of what God is doing. A knowledge of what those things that are opposed to God. And opposed to God's ways in my life. I've got a knowledge from heaven. I've got an insight so that now I can receive strength and divine ability. I can receive an in, a, 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 a understanding and a wisdom to now go ahead and yield myself to God and move with him. Hallelujah. What a beautiful thing. A place where there's no differences. Doesn't matter what your genealogy, what your background is, how many preachers are in your family, or how many, you know, how many heathens are in your family. Don't matter. Here's what the Lord says. Put on, therefore. Here's what the Holy Ghost is doing. Look at it. The Word of God is filled with this. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, those who are holy and beloved. This is it, man. I'm, this is where I'm going in God. This is where I'm moving in Him. This is where I'm yielding myself to Him. This is where the development of heaven is now actualized in my life. Bowels of mercy kindness, humility of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, you do the same thing. And above everything else, have divine love, which is the bond of perfectness. Let the peace of God rule you, rule your heart, and to that which also you're called in one body, Oneness with Christ Jesus, in other words, and, and be ex exceedingly thankful. Be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. This, do you hear what's going on? Because I'm, I'm afraid that people just make these memory verses. It's just religious. It's just Bible reading. It's just knowledge. Oh, isn't that sweet? Oh, isn't that nice? Oh, that's who we're supposed to be someday when we grow up. No, this is what you actively do with your life if you want to develop in the things of the Spirit. If you want to develop in the realms of maturation and growing, if you want to develop in all those things that 
God the Holy Ghost would express to our life. This is the way that you con- you committed to living. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. How are you going to do that? You got to know the word first. I'm just let this word just let this word dwell in you richly tomorrow. Let the word this word of the word of Christ dwell in you richly tomorrow. No wisdom. This this kind of consecration, this kind of living. I'm not going. I'm, I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to get upset. I'm not going to get in the strife. I'm not going to allow unforgiveness. I'm not going to allow a quarrel. I'm not going to allow a debate. I'm not going to sit and listen to somebody tell me about somebody else. I'm going to say, shut up. Oh, he doesn't like me. No, I don't like your behavior. Come on, girl, spank you. Come here, let me slap you. Come here, I got some duct tape. I'm not going to let you dump that stuff on me. Uh Uh-huh. That's nasty. Sit there and listen to that. Call that love? That's not love. That's stupidity. Anna? <laughs> don't do it. Just don't. don't. No, I said no. No. I'm not. You're mistaking me for something else. Come on now. Let that stuff run out of your mouth. God, the Holy Ghost is never going to come out of your mouth. Talk about the devil and the bad things and some temptation, some trial. Shut up. Say none of that nonsense. No, I don't want to hear it. I don't hear about Jesus. I want to. Th- I want to hear the Word of Christ dwelling in you richly. I want to hear. I want to hear what God's got to say. I want to hear heaven teaching and admonishing one another. That's all. That's what I want you. I want to hear that teaching and admonishing. Hallelujah. I want to hear about your problems. I want to hear about your answer. Huh? You meditate on your problems if you want. God says the one you want you to meditate on these good things of it, of His riches towards you. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart toward the Lord. And whatever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father. By him, wives, submit yourself into your own husband. That is a fit in the Lord. Husbands, so the Lord just running through, running through the list. Here's what you need to be doing. You want to walk with me? You want to walk in spirit? Live in spirit? Husbands, love your wife. Be not bitter against them. Children, get everybody here. Don't leave anybody out. <laughs> obey your parents in all things. Bear, obey your parents in some things. Be it children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye services as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartedly. Do it with your heart in it. Do it, ha- do it with with. with, with with purpose and do it with celebration and do it with thanksgiving. Do it heartily. As to the Lord, not to men. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of inheritance for this, for you serve the Lord Christ. Hallelujah. Everybody said hallelujah. hallelujah. But he that doeth wrong shall receive of the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Now, if you just go back, just go back this week and just kind of take that and just review it again with with 1 Peter. Go back and review that again with 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 3. Just meditate on these things. Just review it with Ephesians chapter 4. Say, Father, I want the capacity to know how to do this. What will happen to your people is this. I've watched this happen with folks. They begin to see what God wants for their life and do in the arm of flesh and out of their own human ability. They try to make it happen. And I've seen people get their whole life stuck into trying to, trying to with their own human ability to enforce God's will on their life and people's lives around them. Nonsense is going to get worse. <laughs> you learn how to do these things by the Spirit. Hallelujah. First of all, you get yourself out of it. You quit adding to the problem. Amen. I want everybody to stand with me.
Let me just say this, and I'm, because I, I want to make it real simple for you. Listen to this. You know what that makes that forceful? You know what makes that powerful? Love. Because that can be done in the absence of love. And then it becomes like a, just a, a, it's like Josh up here hitting the cowbell. Bang, 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 bong, 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 dong, 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 whatever. It's a terrible sound, isn't it? Okay, Crystal, you're missing your cue. You missed it. But it's okay, you're going to learn. But you can't come that way. You can't even do that that way. See, but you've got to go all the way around and you've got to come up that side. Because otherwise you're going to walk right across the front of me and you're going to be, it's going to be somewhat interrupted. Now, what if people aren't willing to be trained that way? Then they can't ever be used. I wanted to do that as an example. Can't ever be used. <laughs> I got embarrassed. <laughs> right in front of everybody. Well, you know what? It's, you need to get fed up with you. Fed up. Because it's keeping you from the things that God would do with you. It's keeping you from your training. It's keeping you from your developing. You're so hanging on to yourself, preserving yourself. Self and self and self. Got to keep me cozy and comfortable and tidy and tight and happy. Can't stand anybody say anything bad about me. Or make me feel bad in any way or like I'm not doing it right. Ain't nothing you can do is right. And nothing I do is right either. You might be in the company of people that are as wrong as you are and y'all look relatively right to each other. <laughs> and you can praise one another rejoicing that what you think is right when all the time it is is wrong. Because God says even the wisdom of men is foolishness to him. So that's wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. People sitting hovering over a microscope trying to figure out how to cure cancer. And God already gave us the answer. In the name of Jesus, dry up. How stupid. Spend your whole life trying to figure out there how to deal with the curse. How to be God and the remedy of it. Instead of spending your life. Touching heaven, having developed within you the word of faith. Come on. I had a guy came to me, and he said, listen, I want to I wanna make you a part of my company, pharmaceutical company. And he gave me a very prestigious position, gave me a whole lot of money, wanted to give me a whole lot of money, put it in the bank account, enough for five years, on and on. I'm talking a lot of money, not a little bit of money. I'm talking lots of money. I'm talking, I'll just put it this way, more than a quarter of a million dollars for the, just for the first year. And here's what I want you to do. And, and I said, well, you know what? I mean, I'm not going to say no right off the top of my head. Let me just pray about it. I prayed about it five minutes and said no. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to give my life to solving that which Christ Jesus has already cured. Because if I mix with it, I'll lose out on the press that I have to have all authority in every realm of miracles and signs and wonders. And I'm not selling out. You don't have to give me a whole lot more money than that. And I still ain't going to sell out. I'm not selling out. I don't care if my stock would be worth $10 million. It doesn't matter to me. That ain't enough. That ain't even enough to tempt me. Hallelujah. What's wrong with you? You can't just be sitting there. You already know what to do. Because <laughs> I already gave you an instruction. And, 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 and it's good. It's good because we do that. We do that. And I appreciate you helping me with this, uh, this uh, illustrated sermon here. <laughs> At your expense. We sit there waiting on God. God, what am I supposed to do? He already told you what you were supposed to do. Well, I just don't want to move before the right time. What is our... Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Real soft, real soft. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, that's right, that soft pedal. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. It's beautiful. Crystal, it's beautiful. There would be a time in her life where she'd been so hard on herself, she'd just go home and beat herself up. Huh? But she just said, I'm fed up with me. I'm fed up with me. And I just started watching her. It was, I started watching the transition in her life where she wasn't, her music wasn't about her. She began to dis, distance herself from it by making it about Jesus. See, it's not a conscious distancing yourself from it. It's a conscious making it all about Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now it's gotten to the point now I say to Crystal, you know this song? Yep. You know that song? Yep. Okay. I know what you're doing. I know what that is. There's people, there's an application of our life when we begin, when we begin to have say, yes, I know. Yes, I'm ready. Yes, I got that. Ah, there's a diligence now. And God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. As long as you're just going to leave it out there, you're going to do your own thing. You're going to do it your own way. You're only going to get your stuff in the end. You're only going to get your results in the end. I'm telling you tonight, stop it. God's giving you the power to stop it. To bring it to an end. I've been amazed at how many people are so infatuated with themselves. So in love with themselves. They just adore themselves. <laughs> in the absence of Christ, maybe that's the situation for men. But once you see Jesus, ooh, he's so wonderful. So, he's so beautiful. Jesus. What would you have me to do, Master? I'll do anything for you. And see, it's what's so beautiful is here's this the context. He's come and done everything for us. He's like, what do you want me to do for you? If Father spared not his own son, but offered him up for the sins of us all, shall he not also by him freely give us all things? When that becomes the reality to your life, everything changes. When all of a sudden you know and believe the love that God has for you, when you get, when you when redemption song is no longer a philosophy, an ideology, but a reality. Oh, Father, you did this for me. For me, I mean, I know you did it for Ann. I mean, my goodness, I can understand that. I know she's going to heaven. I'm, I know she's born of the Spirit. No, 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 no. It's for you, for me, mine. It isn't, it, is, it isn't about what you have faith for someone else. It's about what you have faith in Him with respect to how He whoo, <laughs> feels about you. Amen. I know that I preach a long time, but I don't preach long enough. For me, listen, I know that the longer I preach, the, the, the more intense the manifest presence of the Lord. I know that the longer we'll just stand and worship, the more intense the manifestation of the Lord. People come to me who do crusade evangelism, and they go, Pastor, all your meetings are like a crusade. And I'm like, well, what are you trying to tell me? Am I supposed to shorten it? Is it supposed to be like a church meeting? We just want to lay a hold on the power of God. Just, just, just want to lay a hold on the power of God. Just want to touch heaven. I want you to learn how to, to wait as long as it takes. I want you to learn how to just have time in your day to minister to Jesus.
to minister to the Lord. I want you to learn, and you do, I'm telling you, we, we, we just let you loose in, in the worship service to start talking to the Lord. And it's going to get a roar around here. And it's going to be more than the strain of the voice. It's going to be a gushing forth of a river from your belly. This is what we want for you. And we're just going to stay at it. We're going to stay at it. There's enough people in here. There's enough potential power in this place to shake the nations of the earth. I'm not letting this potential go to waste. Uh-uh. No, we're going to get in here. Get things adjusted. Amen. Hallelujah. You're going to get your movement at faith. But God exists. God is. He that comes to God must believe that He is. That He is. That He is present. That He is the I am. That He is. Not that He was. Or that he's going to be, but that he is. He is. Is now, right here. Is. Right here, where, right where you're standing, is. That's my assurance of salvation. That's my assurance of healing. That's my assurance of miracles. That's my assurance of everything in the future. That's my assurance. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. And my name is written in the land's book of life. My assurance. That's my confidence. That's my boldness. He's my strength. Say, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. He is my strength and my redeemer. Just live there. Just live there. Just live there. Moms, tell your children that before they go out the door. So my mama... We couldn't go out the door until we said that. She said, okay, let me hear the password. <laughs> say, say this with me. If we act like we couldn't remember. Say this with me. And she'd, give, she'd quote Psalms 1914. Moms, raise your kids like that, will you? Raise your children that way. Hallelujah. Fill them with the word of God. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. It'll produce riches. Produce great wealth. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Miracles in Jesus' name. Miracles right now in Jesus' name. Supernatural ability in Jesus' name. Divine working of His mighty power in Jesus' name. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that every person in this place will begin to have such an ex exuberating expression of divine love and compassion. That the glory of heaven, that your miracle provision may flow out of us. Father, that that faith would be so activated in this. Hallelujah. Lindsay, come here. Just come over here and just come here. Come. Ask the Spirit of the Lord on you. I just want to pray for you. Lift your hands towards heaven. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. You just stay right there. Don't you get out of that realm. Oh, let God's love overwhelm you. Let God's compassion so grab a hold of you because it's there when that, it's there in that place of his love and his compassion for people around you that that anointing of his presence flows through you. Oh, just let that love, let that goodness, let that glory of God so fill you, overwhelm you, because it gives you such boldness and confidence. Oh, because you just, uh, you're so filled up with Him. You're not lacking any good thing. Not lacking any good thing. Hallelujah. My dear brother, come here. My dear brother, come here. The Lord touched you this morning. He's going to touch you. In fact, 
you and you and your dear wife come quickly here oh, come here come here come here just come come here come come because we're just going to get you we're going to get you while the iron's hot okay just let your hands towards heaven <laughs> hallelujah thank you father for the anointing the fire of the Holy Ghost thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah thank you living God thank you Lord for your glory thank you Lord for your glory hallelujah out of your belly flows these wonderful rivers of the Holy Ghost this great outpouring of heaven this supernatural supply of the Spirit all these things are yours all these things are yours they increase more and more they increase more and more more mucho mas mucho mas <laughs> mucho mas hallelujah hallelujah rara si queres hallelujah mandele si catai mandra ta gila di daile mondo se mete bro sufa ese tunge ese tungle hala la manjesu zitasa hala manjesu li kashu longa mang lenga mang leng rusa father these lives are so hungry for holy ghost pentecost fiery holy ghost pentecost and father we thank you that you give them the supernatural download of god that every good thing that belongs to that realm of the holy spirit is found by them Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, living God. Thank you for the great outpouring. Thank you for the great outpouring. Thank you, Lord, for this great restoring of the things of the Spirit. Orosara, orosere di paia, orosana nengle shipiri. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your miracle grace. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Raphael and the Anlin are just getting so sensitive to you. They're just staying over here on the front row and getting all filled up. Hallelujah. We're just so, oh, Brahman, just not even possible. It's not even possible to resist the Lord. Not even possible to be off somewhere else when God's pouring out His presence, pouring out His glory. Thank you, Father, for this Holy Ghost baptism. Father, I thank you for this fiery anointing. A fiery anointing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you cause glory and honor. Glory and honor. Glory and honor. Suta ile bunglai. Subandale. Bushande ikshaya. The expressions of the spirit. The expressions of the Holy Ghost. The expressions of the fire of God. The presence of God. Where all that is meaningful is heaven. Where the earthly interests aren't aren't interested anymore and all the things people run around thinking about they aren't they aren't your interest just heaven 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 <laughs> Thank you for the miracles. Thank you for the miracles. The miracles.
shows of your love and grace. I tell you, it's this miracle. It's a miracle. Love is life and love and grace. Father, I thank you for the anointing that you put upon Brittany's life. For the hunger that you placed within her for the lost. For the day that she was born of your spirit. Father, I thank you for the anointing that has broken off every, every hindrance and everything that came to try to afflict and torment. Every wound. Everything, oh God, that tried to distract her, Lord. You gave her the ability to rise above and complete dominance and authority over so that she can run this race, yes. you, so that she can win the prize, so that she can be used by you beyond all things she ever thought was possible. Oh, yeah. Harabasadeya. Harabakadeya. Harabakadeya. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. All that you've given to me. Father, freely, freely I give to Brittany. Let your glory so fill this place. Did everything belong into your favor, your purpose, be realized through her life? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Stung, lay, shang, block, da, ha, 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 pina, pina, tina, pina, tona, so, pina, tona, maya, pina, tona, maya, pina, say, or two, hallelujah, hallelujah, kana, manje, kana, maha, kana, maya, kana, maya, da, kana, maya, ta, le, ba, se, ka, ta, ha, 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 in Jesus' name, the glory of the Lord takes hold of every part of you. Oh, in Jesus' name, the power of the Lord is expressed in every part of you. Zagdo J. J. Lamai. Jagalela, Jagalela Bonanea, Jalabokanai, Jalamonkasia, Jalamonkasai, Bakchan, Bakching, Don't Shack Langjay, Butter Roast, Butter Roast, Butter Roasty, Maranea Che, a pa, Butter Roast, bye, ha, ma, ma, ha, ha. Mira lo ma, mira lo manea, mira lo manea pai, zutura, zekuna mokcha, bukstere. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The fire of God falls on you. In Jesus' name. His glory fills this place. Out of your belly flows these rivers. Zado, Zade, Manjel, Manzel, Manzetti, Mando, Kise, Bato, Mani Alamandepo. Mani Ambo Sitaro. Jacqueline, come here. Jacqueline, come here. Come in to this place of usefulness. Just lift your hands towards heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ha. Jeremy, Jew, you, 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 Jeremy, you and Julie, come here. 
Come. You know, I just see glory on you. I see the anointing on you. Ah, just let your hands towards heaven. Just let God fill you up more. I mean, when the Nanasa day, Lamosa guy is on you like that, I mean, just go soak it in. Hallelujah. Just say it nai. Just soak it in. Just soak it in. Just soak it in. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. My goodness. Ha, ha. You don't have to go out and seek and find when the glory of heaven's hovering all over top of you. Hallelujah. Ha, ha. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, living God. Thank you, living God. Ambrose, breve, visisi. I'm going to pray for the first five people to come here. There's one. Of Fire, the Holy Spirit, Design, Baxto, Bitrum, Satos, Exte, Mastan, Basto, Rife, Asaya, Fataxa, Taxea, Sati, Sate, Achos, Ata, Miseropokin, Mando, Atsis, Ato, Pisa, Teropoca, Papa, Fesito, Gisatai, Mando, Opora, Mando, Opora, Sia. Mando para suri saye, pao suyaye, pao siatoya, mato siadea. Surum, susi nae, susi remane nea, mayan shikaraya, mandolo sotoru, lao besisi, bao subaya, mane nea si, mane nea si apaya. Mananea see a pyre sayatai. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus. Now. Now. Yes, Abreve, I am to your side. Yadoy loco. Sate. Mother. Mother. Your glory. Mazay no mong zitai. Yere sorry defi. Yere sorry mane. Yere mando sek bang. Yere diro si raya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Habasia tiro. Mande kosa. In Jesus' name. In the name of the Most High. Una sierra baba. Mira lo Lord me. Father, I thank you for this glorious anointing here on Claire's life. Oh God, increase, enlarge, oh Lord, I pray. Father, let the anointing, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost dominate everything of her life. Zero sadara. Zero dara na minensis. Dara veki zo ya di zede. Zala bok stara da ka chak le kala lo kusara ta. Zoko toki la man jak sela di ishe. Cheko sto kore ne gara ki te be ishe. Boros ti tain. Boros ti dara ne ya pa. Jesu sai ne menja. Jesu da mano mosita. Jesu di anana. I said felt. Fell, 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 fell of heaven's glory, full of heaven's glory, so divine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bonnie, come here. That's right there. Stay right there. Father, I thank you for the anointing right here. Lee shot high, gold shot, glang, glow shot high. Right now, I strength. I speak strength and healing to your body. And to your spirit, great boldness and confidence. In the name of Jesus, great boldness and confidence. I tell you in Jesus' name, the Lord takes hold of you to do great things. 
Zod Barabase, Zotarabase, 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 Lamonson. Eh, she attacked a tisi. Eh, she got a nea city. Those are in an adaptation. Fire of God, the fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire of His presence, now in Jesus' name, takes hold of you. Takes hold of you. Living in the fire of His presence, living in the fire of His breath, living in the rain of His presence. In the name of Jesus, this grace. In the name of Jesus, this mercy. Lo sikina na mamra behedesh. Lo sikina na mandes erdaya. Lo kisina na. Lo kisina naya. In Jesus' name. 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 In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Filled with all grace. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Filled with all grace. Filled with all boldness in the faith. Filled. Mazoza. Men leg zelo. Mambro si zezisto. Manla. Mandepa. Mombadea si abaridea. Mambra vasisura gishea. Filled. Filled. Filled with the comfort of his love. Filled with the boldness of his faith. Filled with the fire of his presence. Filled with the glory of heaven. Filled with an overflowing. Filled with the goodness of his love. Filled with every good thing. Filled, 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 filled. Right out of your belly flows these rivers of the Spirit. <laughs> right out of your belly flows this grace. <laughs> right out of your belly flows the rivers of the Spirit. Right out of your life is praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, woo! Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha ba ba brazo ya. Bye ya 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 na ma. Fine and I am a sick nasty cake. Sick na malaya. Fine and I Zaino machista. Zaino machista. Yeah. Zaino masus. Zaino masus. Mananana. Manereyam rasuya. Right out. You really lose. These rivers are Father, I thank you for your special blessing of grace upon Karen and the children. Father, I thank you for multiplying the gifts and, and, the, and the things that they've sowed and bringing great increase now. Great increase. I've discovered that Father wants his glory to flow in everybody's life. Anytime we think that he wants his glory to fall more in our lives than someone else's, we've made a mistake. Oh, he's interested in filling us up with every good thing. Ha! <laughs> Masa, masa, pity. Yeah. Brace of the ready. Brace of revetist. Mosa dankste. This resists the tie. In Jesus' name. 
Oh, yeah. In Jesus' name. Rasateno. Just receive right now. Just receive right now. Heaven's glory. Can I tell you something? The more you'll let God love people through you, the greater the anointing will be allowed to flow. Even into hard places. Even into places that may resist otherwise. The greater you'll allow God's love and compassion to flow. When you begin to recognize how much he dearly loves every single soul. Every person. Especially those that are the household of faith. Those that made it to the meeting. No matter where they are. No matter where they're found. No matter what's going on in their life. Hallelujah. Any quarrel? Any problem? Forgive it for Jesus' sake. Just, in other words, Jesus saying, just put it on my account. That's what he's saying. Just put it on my account. Just count it to me and forgive me. Ooh. Is that radical? Is that radical talk or what? Hallelujah. Is that radical talk or what? Hallelujah. Father. I thank you, Lord, that every person in this place is going to become exceedingly thankful for this church and for this ministry. I'm going to tell you right now, what sets this ministry apart is saying, first five people I'm going to pray for, and everybody charges to the front. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, that sets this apart. That sets this church apart. I don't care what anybody tells you. The Lord will take care of the rest. The Lord will give you the boldness. The Lord will give you the confidence. The Lord will raise you up. The Lord will take the time. We're not going to faint or weary. Amen. Amen. Papa's not, definitely not going to. <laughs> Amen. How do you like that? He's devoted. He's committed. He's committed. He's all in. Papa's all in. Papa's all in for his cause in you. Papa's all in. Papa's all in. Papa's all in for his cause for you. Papa's all in. Come on here. Papa's all in. In. Papa's all in. Papa's all in. With respect to his cause for you. Father, I thank you for the supernatural blessing and financial supply upon the household of Dwayne Lindstrom. I thank you, Father God, for the wealth of heaven. I thank you, Father, for the giftings of the Spirit upon Dwayne and Lindsay. In Emily's life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you that all sickness and disease has to depart out from the midst of us. In the name of Jesus Christ, every form of affliction, every form of flu, especially stomach flu, trying to grab a hold of people's lives, I break and I curse it in Jesus' name. I break its power. It has no right. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for great boldness in the faith. Boldness. I said, I see boldness in the faith. I'll just tell you right now, Father, not leaving you out of nothing. Father's not withholding nothing. He will not withhold not anything. You will not be left out. No way. How can you get left out when you're constantly jumping in the big middle? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. My older sister, when I was little, she always wanted to go places with me. I want to go with me. I tried to rock her everything. No, I did. Couldn't get rid of her. Didn't matter what I did. She was coming along. Finally, just had to accept it. What's your sister doing with you? With you? Well, try to get rid of her. Listen, people, you're in. You're in, I tell you right now. You're in. Don't exclude yourself. Don't exclude you. Don't let anything run you off. Amen. How can anybody left out be left out that's constantly jumping in the big middle? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I had some preachers come over to our house one day, and my wife and I sat down with them, and it was in the early 90s. I said, I was telling them, I said, you know, God's getting ready to move in a great way in, in the earth and, and in San Diego. And 
Do you believe that you can actually position yourself to be right at ground zero? And the ministers looked at us and said, no, you can't. It's sovereign. I said, watch. I said, we positioned ourselves to be at ground zero in the events that God will take, do in this city, in this region. And they just kind of looked at each other, looked at us, uh, kind of thing. They were more respectful than that. And then one night we were in the meeting there when God gave us that big place and we're hosting, you know, the meetings and people coming from all over the region. And I saw them sitting back in the crowd. There was more than 2,000 people there that night. And I looked back and I went. <laughs> he knew exactly what I was talking about. Because I'm telling you right now, how can you be left out when you've set yourself to be right in the big middle? Somebody said, oh, it's bragging and it's egotistical. No, it's passionate. It's desperate. And Father's not leaving me anyone out that wants to be that, that wants to be in that bad. You hear me? Father's not leaving anyone out that wants to be in that bed. Isn't that good? Yes. It's awesome. So find a bunch of people around you, hug them, tell them that you love them, bless them in Jesus' name. If you're down on the floor, don't get up. If you're down on the floor, you don't need to get up. You don't have to feel like somebody's going to step on my head. If I don't get up, nobody's going to step on you. I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, there's an increase. There's a mucho mas happening. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. There's a mucho mas over here. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ha, ha. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, kasita kuna neyase. Oh, kasita kuna neyase. Oh, kasita kala namaseyate. Ha, ha. Sita no siete. Mandea. Mandea. Mandea frus. Mandea prafadea. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. For your anointing, for your great power, for your heavenly showers, showers of blessings flooding my soul. All showers of blessings are flooding my soul. The showers of blessings from you. Lord, you hide my soul in the depths of your love. Hallelujah. Savrage, I say. Avade sade Mandel mune Mandel mune si Mandel mune si Mandel mune si Mandela Mandela Mandel mune si Mandel mune si Mandel mune si Mandela, Mamma Seo. Mandela, Mamma Seo. 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 Filled up to overflowing in every realm of grace. Thank you, Jesus, for miracle power. Fine. Up the Living in the grace. Living in the grace. Living in the well springs. 
springing from the depths of your soul continually. There is a place, uh, hallelujah, of continual provision. There is a place of a great outpouring of his love. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Sing hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Just to walk around singing hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Well, also, make sure that you worship the Lord with your, with your tithes, with your offerings, with your giving. Make sure that you find time, bless everybody, tell them that you love them. You don't have to be in a hurry. If you want to stay here all night, I'm sure it's not a problem for you to just lay out on the floor somewhere. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. Amen. Father, we thank you for this boldness and this confidence that is in the hearts of your people in this place. That everyone will stand up in the grace and the authority that you've given and not back down. But with great boldness and confidence in the faith, command everything that you've spoken to be a living reality in the life. Hallelujah. O Kosada, to lay hold, O God, on the promises. Hallelujah. To freely receive that which you've freely given. To function in all the gifts of the Spirit. Hallelujah. To grab a hold of those things, oh God, that they seem or feel in their life are lacking. And recognize they don't have to live another day without them. Amen.